Hello and welcome to Destiny Digits. This is the Soul Urge reading for Soul Urge number 11. In numerology, your Soul Urge number tells you about what you what motivates you. You find that number by um, totaling up all the vowels, only the vowels in your full birth name. Um, so that number tells you what motivates you. If you don't know how to find the number, if you don't know it, you can always use the link in the description box. Um, and then find the videos that correlate. So just like you have your sun, moon rising in astrology that you may watch and track, and you can track your four numbers in numerology. That's your core chart, uh, your life path, your expression, your soul urge, and your birthday. And those are the videos that I'm going to be doing based on your core chart. So there are four numbers that you should learn so that you can find the video that matches. Um so let's say if you are an 11, I had some extra, I'll put them out. If you are an 11, one, that's a master number, right? And so 11s are lights in the world. They illuminate the way for others. Um, and master numbers tend to have, you know, uh, an, a, a, a spiritual package that kind of gives them more to do and achieve in life, right? They've, they've got like an extra kit attached to whatever their life purpose is. Um, so, uh, 11s, you can be the most motivating person, or you can be somebody that just sounds like a dreamer, right? And so when we are motivating, it's because we are considerate, we're sensitive, we're understanding, we're inspirational and intuitive. Those are some of like our higher vibrations. But when we're in that dreamer energy, um, which is a lower vibration, that's when we kind of lack confidence, we're self-critical, not practical, kind of shy, kind of withdrawn. You know what I mean? We just kind of talk about things, but we don't put them into action. And we're also not that light. We're not the we're not the way shower that master numbers 11s are. So what motivates you? This number tells you that you are motivated by being a motivator, by by illumination, by knowing things, by being spiritually connected and sharing what you know with others. That that is something that pushes you, that fills your tank, um, and helps you grow. So I normally start with three oracle cards. We have opportunity, embracing, and flexibility. At the bottom of the deck, we have adventures. This is like a pretty bomb selection. Um, so opportunity, I feel in this picture, you know, it's, there's, it's night, there's the moon. Um, and so you know, typically the moon talks about things that are hidden or not yet known. And so I feel like there are opportunities that are available to you that you may not know about yet. Um, and so be on the lookout for that. And then we have embracing. And I feel that this is just saying, you know, embrace the newness, embrace the things that you know and don't know, embrace the known, the unknown, embrace all of what's coming to you. Um, and lastly, we have flexibility. And I feel like this is saying, don't be so rigid. Don't already have the outcomes and expectations so fixed in your mind that you don't know how to adjust to the new that's coming. Be open and be receptive to shifting, changing, cooperating, and adapting, right? And at the bottom of the deck, we have adventures. And so I feel like there, there, something in life is going to feel like an adventure, and opportunities are going to be tucked in the newness that you are experiencing. And so spirit is asking you to embrace all the good, the bad, the things we know, the things we don't know, the things that are comfortable, the things that are not comfortable. Um, and the best way to embrace all things is when we remain flexible and we are not fixated on a certain person, a certain location, a certain, you know, um, now, these are the numerology cards from the deck that I created. Um, and I had an extra, so I put it to the side. We'll talk about those later. Opportunity. We have ever-changing, indiscriminate, and rebellious. So those are low vibrations of five. So typically, fives are like change-oriented. They're freedom seekers. They love a thrill. They're very creative. They're very adventurous. And so I feel like spirit is saying, you know, one, don't squander your energy trying to be so in control, right? But, you know, some things may come to you in a package that you don't understand. And so don't be surprised. Don't feel like you have to push something away because it doesn't fit what you know to be true or it doesn't fit your mold. I feel like Spirit is saying, accept the change, accept the new, um, 
and be joyous as you anticipate this coming in. Um, really relax your mind. Um, next to embracing, we have influential and boss status. So like literally as an 11, you are influential because you, you illuminate, you open people's eyes, you explain them, um, you explain to them things about life and, and, and many aspects of living um, that they never considered in the way that you deliver it. And so I feel like you need to embrace who you are and what you possess, right? Um, because people do look at you, people do follow you. As a master number, it really means that you are some type of teacher. And um, as an 11, I feel like you are teaching the art of an expanded awareness. Next to flexible, we have insensitive, aloof, and distrusting, low vibes of seven. So sevens are typically introspective people. They go within, ask questions, find the answers, discover all the unknowns that are happening outside of them. But, you know, I feel like spirit is saying you have to trust the things that you don't understand even after long reflection because distrusting is is like the opposite of being flexible, especially if there's nothing there that you should not not trust. Um, and so spirit is saying like really, really connect, really ground yourself in what's happening. Embrace it all so that you can make clear judgments as you go within and ask those questions and try to tap into your intuition. At the bottom of the deck, we have high vibes of seven, knowledgeable and studious. So if you are on an adventure that includes you learning something new, studying something that you've always wanted to know, you know, accepting some type of project or, or position that has learning, involved in it in order for you to grow and, and really master this craft. If you are in a new relationship, if you are learning the, this new partner, um, if you have become a parent, like life is literally learning, right? Um, and when you look at it that way, then everything feels like an adventure. And so you are in that space of really taking your mental space extremely serious. You want to absorb things constantly. You know, in this space, you are a sponge and things are new. And so if you can approach this, these adventures that are coming to you, um, if you can approach them in a, in, a, in a very childlike way, like children are just excited, you know, to walk, that they have to run, skip and jump, you know? And so if that's how you can approach this newness, I think it'll, it'll benefit well. Um, so now we're going to do tarot. This is the nine card box spread. Um, okay, so far we have the hermit and we have the four of cups. Now the center card is gonna be kind of like the card that, that will have like the central energy. Hmm. All right, so the hermit talks about solitude. Um, it talks about really disconnecting from others, from the world, um, going into your own private space so that you can go again, you can go within. Um, so it's like being in private so that you can go into your private, your sacred space. Um, and that's when you go within, um, you ask, you wonder, you discover, you hear, you listen, right? And so I feel like the opportunities that are available to you may not be, um, they may not be something that you would assume. I feel like this could be something that's new, um, but it requires you to tap in. It, it requires you to use that gift that you have, that you share and spread and offer others. Right now, that is what you need to be doing for yourself. So the hermit phase um, is essentially going to reveal something to you. Now, then we have this three of cups. And I feel like this is the energy of somebody who um, is over it, right? Um, what they've experienced so far has left them empty, exhausted, depleted, unsatisfied, um, and they are just really not sure about what to do, right? So this is like a period of like frustration, but rest, right? This is, this is the energy of like just giving up. And then spirit comes and offers us a nugget, right? But we wouldn't be able to get this new cup from spirit unless we stepped into this hermit mode. Now, 
after this four of cups, we have the two of pentacles, which sometimes can talk about instability. It can talk about, you know, just always things going in, just being trapped in a cycle, not for good, not necessarily, it, it seems like it will never level out. Like, right? Just always being in something that really doesn't advance you. You don't lose, but you also don't advance. It's just like this wheel um, where you're giving out energy, you're making things, um, you're attempting to be balanced. But when one thing goes up, one thing goes down, and then you just have to keep going. Um, and so this could have been the energy that puts you in the space of being over it, just, you know, not even wanting to, to participate anymore. Um, but I think spirit is saying, like, you know, give yourself the gift of a new perspective, right? And once you tap in and ask those questions and discover what it is that really is displeasing to you, like spirit can begin to offer new things to you. Um, and whatever instability, whatever frustration, whatever energy you constantly were putting out to no avail, I feel like you will be able to settle just the emotional roller coaster that you have been on by way of experiences that have left you on E. Then we have embracing, and we talked about embracing who you are, right? Now, underneath the hermit, we have the Four of Pentacles, which sometimes can talk about being greedy or holding on or not wanting to let go of something. Um, and then after this, we have death, which is something comes to an end, right? So I think we're holding on to an energy. Um, and I, I think that that's a perspective. I think it really is. I think it's something within you, a mindset, a belief um, that you have to let go of um, in order to gain clarity, in order to become illuminated, in order to find the peace that you desire. And so when we talk about embracing, I feel like you need to embrace what in you is no longer serving you, right? When you're in the space of not being fulfilled, being over it, or just always juggling, going back and forth, like never being able to settle, there's something that is propelling this energy, something that that helped you get these three cups here that are unfulfilling. So there's something you need to let go of. And I feel like it is through this hermit space that you will understand what that is. And that's where the opportunity presents, right? That's when we get that aha moment. So if you can embrace who you are, what you offer, I feel like you can let go um, I feel like you will be able to release um, the tangible things in this world that you so hold on to. So like we have pentacles, you know, but the hermit just has a light and a lantern. Like that's more of a spiritual connection. Um, and this is more of like holding on to worldly things, um, not being able to let them go. And um, something, something about that, that, that inability to change, release, you know, something about um, greed, possibly has to die in order for us to step into this space um, with this temperance angel where no matter what, we're okay. Like no matter what life looks like around us, we're okay. But when we try to hold on to things or when we try to predict what's going to happen or prepare for the unknown, I feel like we will always be dissatisfied because something bigger is taking place in our life. Something bigger is in control. And when you realize what is unique about you and your part in that plan, I think it'll be a lot easier to go with the flow and to tap into the gifts that you possess. So this, this, this over, oh, and at the bottom of the deck, God, I always do that. At the bottom of the deck, we had the eight of swords, which is like literally putting yourself in a mental prison. Um, not being able to clear your mind, rectify your thoughts, make sense of anything, like feeling trapped, but it's really by your own doing. And so that is the energy that needs to die. Something needs to be released. I said, I feel like it's a perspective. It's a mindset. It's a way of going about life. You need to be patient. You need to have balance. You need to temper all aspects of self. Um, 
And it is through the the Hermit energy that you will start to open yourself up to the newness that is coming and understand who you are and what you possess. And so I feel like this is this is like one of those cusp readings, right? Where one door has closed or is in the process of closing and we're understanding about how to shift and accept and embrace the new so that we don't have to repeat and live the old stuff. But in this situation, I feel like you've made it through something. And now it's about really understanding what you went through, why it was necessary, and how it helps you moving forward. At the bottom, we have uh, flexibility. And then we have 10 of cups, which is like this unconditional love. Um, You know, just it's unconditional love. It's what everybody thinks and dreams of when we think about family. But then we have judgment, followed by the knight of cups. Okay. So the only two or three, you know, we have judgment, death, and not being satisfied. I feel like you know, this could be a situation with family. This could be an upbringing, how you were raised, how you were groomed, how you were taught. You know, I feel like something about something about earlier aspects of your life, they kind of taught you what it meant to be you. And I feel like you were learning that you were much bigger than than what you were told about yourself, right? I think that we could have come from families that were not flexible. They were insensitive, right? They didn't trust things unless it looked like wealth, unless it looked like something. Um, you know what I mean? Like just very worldly type of, of mindsets. Um, But nonetheless, I feel like anything, any any relationship that we were in, either by birth or by choice, I feel like those relationships that were supposed to really be nurturing and loving and um, supportive of, of who we were, um, if they were short of that in any way, I feel like it it taught us to hold on to possibly be codependent in some situations because you never know what you're going to get from these situations that you're emotionally invested in. And so, you know, it teaches you to like, it's, it's just an unhealthy attachment, right? It's an unhealthy attachment, something that we need to release a mindset perspective and wherever it was learned, wherever you learn this from, Um, wherever you first experience this, then we have the judgment here. So I feel like judgment is coming to all the falsities that you believe to be true. And those those could have been things that were passed down to you through family. Um, And you may have to make a judgment call on, on the things in your life that are no longer valid or true. Maybe you have to disconnect with family. Maybe you have to let some of your family go. Maybe you have to release these emotional attachments to people that really don't reflect the gift that you are. And you do have to find solitude in order to get yourself back together, right? Um, so it was, it, it seemed like there was some type of judgment call made on a situation where there was Definitely emotional investment, connection, family, whatever. And this death is kind of what propelled you into this bigger, this bigger understanding of you and of what you are meant to do. After this judgment, we have the nine of cups. And so I feel like, you know, you have one aspect of family, love, partnership, commitment that is, you know, subpar but it's through this judgment that you get to rebirth yourself, your mindset, everything you know. And now you have this new understanding of what love is, of what compassion is, of, of of what life is. I feel like you have a newfound love for life and for living. Um, 
and you have an approach, you are pursuing something new. Um, but spirits thing, you know, spirit says, don't be distrusting. I know where you came from, but don't think everything is like where you've been. And so you have to be flexible um, as you approach, as you chase, as you go after the things that you want to offer this cup to you. And I feel like this Knight of Cups, this cup, this is a cup from spirit. Um, this was the cup that was offered, you know, in the four of cups. I feel like, you know, this is you taking this cup from spirit with this expanded awareness and then understanding how to better pursue you, whether it's just pursuing the things you love about you, whether it's pursuing anything in life. But remember, we, the, the bottom of the deck said adventures, knowledgeable, studious. But I feel like this is about you. This is about your mindset. This is about you understanding your power. This is about understanding you and the things that you were taught and conditioned to believe about who you were by others or by experiences and relationships. I feel like those things were false, but they were necessary for you to find your way, right? And so just like you had to be illuminated in your own life, that is exactly what you do for others. And you have a story to say about just the difference in perspective, the shift that you got after really tapping into self. Like, yeah. So 11s, I feel like you are motivated by your own inner spark. And Spirit is saying the adventures are beginning and you should soak up and absorb as much information and knowledge as you can. Be the best student, right? So. You know, life is like a class that we're all taking, right? And the subject is you. And like you are the hardest lesson that you are ever going to have to learn. And once you understand your own power, then that's really where you can start to take this class, this class of you. Um, but Spirit is saying be flexible, embrace the experiences, embrace that sometimes things must end for a new to be born, to be transformed let go of what needs to be done dead and over with um yes all right 11s thank you for stopping by take care